China's economy is 60% smaller than we thought. At least that is the implication if we are to believe the research presented in this research paper by Professor Louis Martinez from the University of Chicago. This would mean that instead of soon becoming the second largest economy in the world, China's economy is only about a third of the size of the mighty US economy. And it also means that predictions such as those made by billionaire investor Ray Dalio that China is soon to overtake the US as the world's next superpower are way overblown. Finally, having much lower GDP also means that China's debt levels are actually much higher relative to the size of its economy, meaning that its debt-fueled property bubble is much more dangerous than we thought. But this all depends on the answer to one question. Can you trust this research paper more than China's official GDP figures? Well, for you to make up your mind about that, I'll first tell you why China's official figures are so problematic. Then I'll show you the evidence that this paper presents and how I used it to calculate China's real GDP number. After that, I'll discuss both the strengths and weaknesses of the evidence against China's official statistics, plus what this greatly reduced GDP figure would mean for the global economy. Okay, so China's official GDP figures measuring the total spending in the economy have actually been very controversial for a long time. I mean, according to leaked documents, even China's vice president admitted that China's GDP figures are man-made and therefore unreliable. You see, to calculate GDP, governments all around the world typically collect data on transactions in all sectors of the economy. But the problem is that GDP growth is often seen as a measurement of success. The numbers for America's economic growth or GDP were just released. And I am thrilled to announce that the United States economy grew at the amazing rate of 4.1%. So to stay in power, politicians need higher GDP numbers. And sure, they could get them by governing well, allowing the economy to grow, but that is really hard work. It would be much easier to just get higher GDP numbers by just adjusting the numbers upwards a little bit every year. However, the problem for politicians in democratic countries is that the statistical agencies responsible for recording GDP operate independently. For example, Donald Trump could not just walk into the US Bureau of Economic Analysis and demand higher growth numbers. And even if he managed to pressure the statisticians there to fudge the numbers, this would likely find its way to the free press, making this quite an unattractive option for politicians in democratic countries. But what if you are a dictator that controls both the statistical office and the press? Now suddenly it becomes quite attractive to adjust the numbers upwards just a little bit every year. Therefore, more authoritarian countries are likely to overstate GDP growth more. At least, that is the main claim of this paper by Professor Louis Martinez. And as a scientist, he backs up that claim with data. In this case, from satellites. Because sure, rulers that control both the statisticians and the press can easily manipulate GDP statistics. But they cannot fake real economic activity. And in our modern economies, real economic activity can be seen from space, especially when night sets and the lights go on. So to find out if authoritarians manipulate GDP statistics more, Martinez looked at 184 countries between 1992 and 2008. Then he compared the growth of lights at night in each country to the growth of GDP that each country reported. What he found is that, as expected, when a night's light grew, all countries typically also reported that GDP grew. However, when making a distinction between autocratic and democratic countries, a clear pattern emerged. Autocratic countries typically reported a whopping 35% higher GDP growth numbers compared to nighttime lights growth. And for China specifically, Martinez states that based on his analysis, China's GDP growth between 1992 and 2008 was likely 4.9% per year rather than its average reported growth of 4.1%. 
6.3%. But frustratingly to us here at Money & Macro, Martinez did not calculate what that means for China's GDP today. So we decided to do that ourselves. But we will discuss how we did that after a word from our sponsor, Incogni. You see, while dictators manipulate their own data in the West, your personal information is traded by hundreds of data brokers without you even knowing about it. These brokers aggregate personal data, including your employment history, home address, or SSN, and sell it to all kinds of businesses. For example, health insurance companies purchase health-related online search data to assess your level of risk and can raise rates based on your online activities. Even worse, some data brokers have been caught selling data to scammers. Ever wondered why you get thousands of spam mails that you never signed up for? Well, now you know. And while you have the right to request data brokers to delete your data, it's so complicated that it would take years to do it manually. Luckily, there's a solution. Incogni helps you to take your personal information off the market by reaching out to data brokers on your behalf requesting your personal data removal and even dealing with any objections from their site. All fully automated. Now, if you want to try it, the first 100 people can use my personal discount code MONEYMACRO to get 20% off of Incogni. Just check out incogni.com slash MONEYMACRO and take your private data off the market. All right, back to how we calculate the true size of China's economy. Based on how much authoritarian countries overstate GDP growth compared to night light growth, Martinez produced what he calls a GDP deflator. This GDP deflator is basically a number by which to reduce official GDP numbers each year based on how authoritarian a country is. Using his deflator, we extend Martinez's analysis to the year 2021. And while between 1992 and 2021, China reported a sky-high GDP growth between 14 and 8 percent, Martinez's analysis suggests that China actually only grew between 6 and 2 percent. Importantly, this means that instead of surpassing the USA as the largest economy in the world, China is still quite far from it. Now, don't get me wrong, these are still really impressive growth numbers. On average, it was still quite a bit higher than the 4.1% that Trump was so proud of. And this growth was still enough for China's economy to surpass that of Japan and become the second biggest economy in the world. But at this point you might say, Yuri, this paper and your calculations, they look a bit rough around the edges. Why should I trust them? over the official statistics provided by the Chinese government. And yeah, there is some truth to that in the sense that this is a very rough calculation. Martinez himself even calls it a back of the envelope calculation. And so, yeah, you should take these adjusted numbers with a big grain of salt. But that being said, I do actually think that the adjusted numbers are closer to the truth than the official numbers for three reasons. First, it's important to mention that this paper has been critically assessed by dozens of economists. It has been presented at seminars at the University of Chicago and Illinois, as well as at policy institutions such as the Central Bank of Chile and the World Bank. What's more, it has been peer-reviewed and published in the prestigious Journal of Political Economy. Second, Martinez has done a lot of checks to make sure that the findings that authoritarians consistently have higher GDP growth than nightlight growth cannot be explained by some other factor. For example, you could imagine that geography has something to do with this relationship. Or perhaps most authoritarian countries were just less developed economies in 1992, which changed their relationship with nightlights. Or perhaps the structure of authoritarian economies is just different because their people move to cities less. Or it could also be that they just rely on industries that produce fewer lights. Well, Martinez checked for all of this and more, and it didn't affect his main results. So his analysis that authoritarians overstate GDP holds. Now, at this point, you might say, Yuri, okay, okay, but Martinez's calculations of GDP was about the average manipulation of authoritarian regimes it is not applicable to China. And yeah, that could be true. So 
I looked into it. I started by examining why China's own vice president would ever admit that he didn't trust his own GDP numbers. And there it turns out that China is quite unique in that the central government used to set GDP growth targets for provincial governors. And if any of you ever worked in a company with a growth target, you probably know that while they can be effective, they typically also produce a lot of unwanted side effects. For example, economic research shows that sales targets in companies lead to bad sales, such as those sold at unsustainable discounts as well as manipulated sales numbers. So it's not surprising that research has already shown that China's GDP growth targets led to both wasteful investment projects and, more importantly to us, manipulated GDP numbers. Similarly to Martinez's study, another economist uncovered that in the years that Chinese provincial governments needed to be selected, there were huge differences between reported GDP figures for that province and data that could not be manipulated, such as electricity consumption. Even economic researchers from within China reported that provincial governors that hit their GDP growth targets typically got promoted, while those that didn't got the boot. You are done. Fired. Finally, when I myself looked into the nightlight data of a paper published in Nature and compared that to the World Bank GDP data, I found that indeed China's reported much higher GDP growth compared to nightlight growth than, for example, its more democratic, also rapidly growing and large neighbor, India. So yeah, there is a lot of evidence that China is manipulating its GDP data just as much, if not more, than other autocratic countries. And this is why, with the caveat that this is an extremely rough calculation, in my opinion, China's GDP is likely 40% of its official figure. Now, this still makes China the second largest economy in the world, but it is only at 30 to 45% of the US economy, depending on how you measure it. In any case, the Chinese economy is still very far from being number one, especially now that its economy is slowing down due to a property crisis. And this means that China's current economic problems could be much worse than we thought because debt to GDP is much higher because GDP is much lower. What's more, it has huge geopolitical implications in that China would be far less threatening to the US than we thought. But what do you think? Are you as convinced by this research as I am? Or do you have a better explanation for why nightlights in China don't grow as fast as reported GDP? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and as always, if you think that I misrepresented the issue here, feel free to have a look at all the research that I mentioned in this video in my source list, as well as my own calculations in the description of this video. And while you're there, consider clicking on the link to my Patreon page to support my research. of the country. <laughs> Henry.